Howdy folks and welcome back to World of, I almost said the name of a military vehicle, but motion. Today we are going to see a nice small example of flying shear using a cam profile. So let's see the contents and what we will see in this example. So we will see hardware configuration, then we will go to flying shear and inside some machine project. So we have some machine for the two, then we have on Ethernet our LMC078 and two Circos drives which will represent X and Y axis. Additionally, I want to say that more detail regarding this application is done in solution number 132. So please visit our website and check out complete hardware details of this application and what we are going to do. Few words regarding function block versus cam profile. What are the benefits? If you use function block, then literally what you have is a function block which you parameterize and it's over. No programming at all. On the other hand, if you use a cam profile, you will have to make a certain program which can be a bit complicated depending on your application. Benefits of a CAM profile is that you can see actually what is going on with your CAM profile. So you can see velocities, jerks, acceleration and you can adapt it to your application. So let's continue in so machine. You can see already that our project is in the controller and it's running. And now we will just represent shortly the certain parts and after that we are going to run our flying shear. So first thing we have incremental encoder and the difference between this and solution 132 encoder that we are at the moment using the encoder with much bigger resolution. Additionally we have two Circos drives exactly like in solution 132. Then we are using advanced input 0 for our touch probe. And additionally what we have is integrated drive on can open to run our conveyor. Now let's see a bit of our actual application and what we have inside our application. So if we open our application, we will see that it's separated in four parts. In first part, we are just running a drive, so reading a status and most important, checking our touch probe input. In second part, we have operating modes and we have two. One is preparing the axis, so homing, moving to position and then automatic to run our CAM profile. Additionally, we have some axis operation for homing, absolute movement, setting a position. And at the end, we have our camming function blocks with also reading a tuppet to engage our vertical axis to do certain movement. Here in automatic we have two parts, one part is checking the touch probe input and the other part is for vertical movement of our Y axis. Let's continue. Then we have cam profile and here you can see that we have positioning profile of our flying shear. So, in the beginning, we are uh, rotating inside this field until we detect the touch probe. When we detect the touch probe, we set the position of a slave to 995 and then we run a profile and again we are waiting for a touch probe. Here you can see the settings of our cam profile and also tuppets, which will indicate when we will switch on and off. That means when we will go in one or other direction with vertical axis. 
For this example, we also prepared small visualization. And now we are going to show how this works. So first, let's prepare the axis. What you will see, the drives will enter homing. They will home to limit switch and then they will additionally move in certain absolute position away from homing position. So now you see homing. When homing is done, the axis will additionally move. And here is additional absolute movement. When they stop, we will have green light and which will indicate that our axes are prepared. Now we can enter automatic mode. And at the moment, green light indicates that our cam in block is ready. Now let's move our conveyor. Here you can see that our conveyor is moving and at the moment when this black line on conveyor comes to our touch probe we will start the motion of our X axis on our manipulator. And it will be now. When vertical axis moves up, we are entering the synchronous area. And when vertical axis is moving down, we are exiting the synchronous area. Again, back to a starting position. Now let's try to run this a five time faster. And we will try to run this much faster than original speed. Here it is. Okay, let's stop our drive but first let reduce a bit the speed of the our conveyor this is it thank you very much i hope it was helpful bye